So in this video, we're gonna make a logo and 3D print it. Here's my logo that I printed. That's Adventures in Creation logo. Turn it into a 3D model. We're gonna actually work with a different one. We're gonna work with this logo. It's an invented logo for a fastener company called Cone. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that logo and we're gonna turn that into a printable file. So the first thing we're gonna do is import the logo into Inkscape. If you don't have Inkscape, I recommend you download it. It's a free download, it's open source, and you can use Inkscape for lots of graphical needs, but it's very good for this stuff. So let's do that. We're gonna import, and we're gonna import our logo, which is a PNG file. And when it comes in, when you do an import, it's gonna pop up this import screen and you can just accept all of the defaults and then my import is over there and don't worry about this this is actually the page that we're working on this is my image so i can actually go here to the edit say resize the paper to the image and there i have it now what i need to do is i need to make this an svg so we're going to trace this bitmap yeah, the way we're going to do that is we go path and trace bitmap and it will open up this dialog and if you look at mine the single scan brightness cut off that looks like a pretty good scan right there it looks like that's going to give us everything we need you can try different things there are lots of different options around tracing bitmaps but that's what I'm going to do. You can up the threshold. If you look, notice how it's all going black. If I go back this way, you'll see it start to get lighter. And I think right around that middle part there is fine. So I'm going to apply that. And what happens is when you apply it, it creates a copy. So now if I go over here and I move that, there's my copy. I don't need that original drawing anymore, that PNG file. So I'm just going to delete that out of here. And I'm going to just move this back in that area there. And once again, I'm just going to say edit and resize the page. So now I have my logo. And all I'm going to do is just say file, save as. And I want to save it not as an Inkscape file, but I'm going to save it as a plain SVG. And I'm going to call it logo file. And then I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to switch over to FreeCAD. Then once we're in FreeCAD, we're going to start a new file. I'm going to start part and body. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file import. And I'm going to look for that same file. And there it is, logofile.svg. Now when you do that, it's going to pop up a dialog and it's going to say image formats into FreeCAD or SVG as geometry. We want the geometry, so we're going to take that one say OK, and there's our file. Now I'm just going to look at it from the top so you can see it. What it does, it creates a path for each of the elements in our file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through our paths and figure out which ones we actually want to turn into a model. Now if I look at that shape, if you look very closely in here, you can see there are two paths. One is the inside shape, and one is the outside shape, and I want to take that outside shape. So to convert this shape into something that we can use, we are going to go into the draft workbench. And in the draft workbench, we're just going to use a select that path, make sure it's selected. We're going to use this draft to sketch. We're going to click that. When we do that, just as a matter of housekeeping, I'm going to press the space bar so it turns off that path. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to see that I have a sketch already. Now I don't want to put that sketch in the body on its own because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all four of those pieces because they're going to be one pad and I'm going to combine those sketches together. So I'm going to show you how we do that too. So what I'm going to do to, to select the next path, I'll just click over here. I can see that's the path. And if I zoom in there, Click on that path. You can see that is the outside one. So I'm going to click that one as well. And then I'm just going to hit space bar to turn that one off. 
Then I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to select this path, which is path 29. I'm going to create a sketch, switch off the path. And then my final one, because I'm just going to do these four together. I'm going to select that one. That's path three. I'm going to make that a sketch. Turn off that path. Now if I go to the bottom and I select all four of these sketches, I can come back to my part design. And over here I have merge sketches. So you may need to go into the sketcher. I have mine available in part design. So I'm just going to do it there. I'm going to hit this. And all it does, no frills, it just makes the next sketch number, sketch four. That is a sketch of all four pieces. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to move it up. If I just hover over the top one, it'll scroll up. And I'm going to drop it into this body here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to those sketches, just again for housekeeping purposes. And I'm just going to delete them. I don't need those sketches. So they're all deleted. We're going to take this sketch and we're going to pad it. And then when we create the pad, you can see I have all four of my pieces padded. And they're 10 millimeters tall. And that's probably good enough because what I'm probably going to do, actually, I'm going to make them a little smaller. I'll make them eight. And then what I'll probably do is bring the text up to 10 and these screws up to 10. So they're sitting up higher. That's basically how you do it. Now, one thing I have set in my preferences that you should check, I have, when I look at part design, I have allow multiple solids in part design body by default. So it allows me to do that. If you don't want to do it that way, if you don't want to switch that on, what you could do is create a sketch and make a base for this because you're going to have to make a base for it anyway. So if I cancel that pad and I go back, if you don't want to switch yours to create separate pads, what you can do is go into this body. I'm just going to rename my body as base. And then I'm going to create a new sketch in that body. I'm going to create on the XY plane. And I'm just going to create a rectangle. I'm going to go from here all the way out. And I'm just lining it up with the edge there. Good enough. We'll close that one. Then I'm going to pad that sketch first. And I'm just going to make it two millimeters. And reversed, say OK. Then I'm going to take the next sketch and pad that. I'm going to make that eight millimeters. And there you have it. So that's the beginning of it. And I'm not going to make you watch me do all the paths for all of these pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to complete that. And then we'll come back and I'll take a walk you through what I've done. So now I've modeled all of these pieces. I just literally went through the same process for the letters. The only one that had any kind of difference was the inside of that O. I did both of those together and then just um, padded the sketch. Again, you can put all of those sketches together and then merge them so that then you have text as one sketch. If you look there, just merge that into one sketch. Screws, I did the same thing with that. I merged them all in. Then I created a body with that in. And then the final part is, if you want to, you can merge them all together in a Boolean. So you can go with this one, is I'm just going to select the base, make that my active body. And then I'm going to Boolean these other guys together. And then we'll just say OK, because they're fused together. Everything's fused. Say OK. And we should be off to the races. And once we have that, we can select our part, file, export. And we're just going to export it out as our walkthrough part. So I save. I already have a version of it there, so I'm just going to overwrite it. And then once I've done that, I can open my slicer. I use the Prusa slicer. So we're going to open the Prusa slicer and we'll bring that into here. We'll import our part. It's this part here. 
And as you can see, it's quite big on there. So if I was printing this, I would print it smaller. So you can, in the Brewster size, so you can just say scale. Bring it down to whatever size you want it. I'm going to just make sure that the bottom of that is on the bed, which I think it is, but that's all good. And then we're going to slice it. And then if we look down through our slice, you should see that everything looks good. And we have a logo that's printable. And now I can just send that to the printer and print that out. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. It's, I try to do a quicker video this time. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to take a logo and we're going to turn it into an LED lighted sign. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm not going to do it in this video. I want to try and keep them shorter because I do an hour long video and people only watch the first five minutes. So I don't want to do that. I'm just going to make a shorter video and you guys can watch it and then we'll watch the next one. So if you haven't subscribed already, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, it's free, doesn't cost you anything, and then you'll know when the next video is coming out. If you have any suggestions, anything you'd like to see, let me know. If you want to buy us a coffee, you can on coffee.com, or if you want to give us a super thanks, you can certainly do that too. I appreciate that when people do that. It's always nice to receive that. It helps me, keeps me incentivized to, to keep the videos coming. I appreciate it. I appreciate your support. And I'll see you in the next one.